Hey everyone, it is Danny and welcome to this update video. I hope that you guys are having a really amazing day thus far. And so of course, uh, this video is going to be comprising of quite a bit. We'll be talking about the El Nino, which is officially here, as well as what is currently happening and what is expected as we progress through today and to a greater extent uh, the coming weeks. And so before I go into details, please do subscribe if you haven't yet done so and tap the notification bell so that you never miss an important update. And so as we take a look at this uh, infrared satellite, we can see that there is some activity noted across different areas, particularly the Caribbean, as well as that intertropical convergence zone. And here on the surface chart, we can see uh, where the axes of those tropical waves are. Of course, there's one that recently emerged from Africa, another is on its way to northern South, South America. One is making its way uh, to the west and the axis is currently located over parts of eastern Venezuela and two have entered the eastern pacific so none of these waves are of great concern at the moment nothing is marked uh for the next seven days and so let's head closer to the caribbean so heading to northern south america we can see that there is some activity noted across some areas not too much uh at the moment for parts of french guiana going to Suriname and guyana the southern part of the country is having some thunderstorm activity though heading over into venezuela similar story the southern part of the territory is experiencing uh, likely experiencing quite a bit of shower and thunderstorm activity as well as in parts of the northwest but we see more of that convection over into parts of Colombia and so uh, there is a bit of activity that is extended into parts of Bonaire and maybe Curacao as well but overall for the ABC Islands much rainfall activity is not anticipated going to Trinidad and Tobago and also the Grenadines and Grenada things are looking to be in the clear this morning so let's head to the Caribbean at large here and we can see that over in the east it's pretty dry but we see that little streak of showers and thunderstorms making its way into the vicinity of Puerto Rico. But of course, things are pretty dry for the rest of the east and uh, a pattern change is going to be coming up where we have more of those waves making their way through and enhancing the rainfall activities. Of course, uh, in the vicinity of Jamaica and Cuba, there we have all of that uh, deep convective activity taking place. So that has been induced in lots of showers and thunderstorms. And in terms of Jamaica, as of recently, a lot of that has been remaining offshore off the island. And uh, some of that is spilling in this morning, actually. So uh, if you're in parts of Western parishes you might experience some shower activity but for most of the island things are uh, pretty overcast a bit sunnier going to the east but of course there has been flooding in cuba but uh, thankfully this is expected to make its way out later today but there is some new some new thunderstorm activity in the vicinity of the bahamas going over into central america there was that blob that developed that is dissipated now uh, and for most of these central american territories there isn't too much happening but we find a bit more action going to the southern territories such as Costa Rica and Panama. And so guys, let's now go ahead and take a look at what is expected in terms of the rainfall through today, starting out with Euro. And so here we can see that, uh, of course, as the map becomes more colorful, as we see more of those shades of darker reds, uh, we have more rainfall expected within that particular area. So through today, this is what Euro is expected. Uh, we're going to be seeing quite a bit of activity across central Cuba, maybe for a little Cayman and Cayman Brac, as well as extended out into the Bahamas. So uh, the euro isn't showing too much rainfall activity for Jamaica. Of course, some rainfall will be possible across sections of the island today, but in terms of major rainfall activity, that isn't being forecasted by the euro. Uh, and then, of course, heading into Central America, going to South America, Northern South America, we can see that most of these areas are expected to receive substantial rainfall heading through today. Of course, in the east, as I said, we have those little cloud clusters coming from the tropical Atlantic that could enhance the weather there bring in some showers so that is where we see those very low rainfall totals expected head into the gfs model is gfs in agreement with this somewhat so we can see that gfs is also forecasting quite a bit of rainfall for parts of cuba uh, the cayman islands also extended into parts of the bahamas not showing much activity for jamaica but uh, heading into central america going to honduras southward and for most of northern south america quite a bit of rainfall activity likely across some areas uh, heading through today next 
we have the Saharan air layer map. So we can see that all of this dust has entered the Caribbean. So if you're in the east, it's likely that you're seeing very hazy skies over there because of all of that Saharan dust. And we're in the month of June, which is really when we start to see a lot of these dense plumes of dust uh, coming from Africa, making their way across the Atlantic and heading to the Caribbean. And so now I want to go ahead and talk about the potential for development and then finally we're going to be talking about the El Nino which has been officiated. So going on to this map here, of course, where we see those black lines, those are called isobars which join areas of equal pressure. Of course, they are imaginary lines. And so when we see them closed in a circular manner with a pressure which is that number that you see of at least 1030 millibars or lower than that, that is a low pressure system which can sometimes times be a tropical cyclone and the more of those circular lines you see and the lower that value is is the stronger the system. So let's look at what GFS has to show. There we have that forecast time right up there. So let's see what Laurent has to show. And as we head into next week, go into the middle of the week, we can see that some activities expected in the Southern Caribbean that eventually makes its way over into the Pacific, but then head into uh, the latter part of next week and go into the start of the new week. There we can see the GFS expecting some activity in the Western Caribbean, uh, likely as a result of maybe one of those waves making their way through and uh, conditions being conducive enough to allow for some development. But I haven't been uh, really concerned about this in a sense because for one, it is pretty far out and the further it is in terms of the time compared to now, the more the accuracy decreases. And GFS has been very consistent about this, but really only time will tell what is going to be happening. I don't doubt that we could see something. As for the Euro model heading to the end of next week and the start of the new week, the model is showing all that increase in uh, activity across sections of Central America, but not actually showing that we're going to be seeing a storm developing. We're not seeing those closed isobars to indicate that. So uh, very interesting here what these models have. And I mean, we're in the hurricane season, so this wouldn't be surprising. But as for a major hurricane, I don't really see that happening, uh, at least for the foreseeable future. But again, only time will tell. But, but one factor that will help to hamper development this hurricane season is uh, the wind shear induced by the El Nino. So we're officially in an El Nino, which is when we have above average warming over in the equatorial Pacific. So that kicks up those upper level winds, which help to prevent tropical systems from developing and intensifying. And uh, that can be combated, however, by the anomalous warmth over in the Atlantic Basin. So uh, it's not cool in there as we would typically see in an El Nino season, but rather warming. So uh, that is why the season is such a complex one. And we really don't know what is going to be happening. But of course, guys, I'm going to be keeping you posted on all that is expected ahead of time as well in terms of future systems as we progress throughout the rest of the hurricane season. So that is it for this video. And I hope that you found it to be informative. But if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments or you can share your thoughts there. And remember to always be weather wise.